attending Sarah Winchester today is Phil Hammer of Hammer and Jacobs. Representing the public guardian is Jerry Holman, Dean of Santa Clara University School of Law. And beside you will be Justice Martin Crochet from the Court of Appeals First Appellate District. Uh, turn around a flyer announcing some of the things we'll be doing in the upcoming months. If anybody would like to join us for our organizing committee meeting, we will be published office of the Hitler Mendelssohn on 60 South Market Street. And uh, we welcome all suggestions. Thank you. Winchester is suffering from a syndrome manifested by continual construction in her home, building and tearing up room after room in a continued frenzy year after year. And I have been informed by reliable sources that Your Honor may be afflicted by the same syndrome. <laughs> I have been informed that your own home is in a relatively constant state of remodeling and construction. <laughs> Uh, and we fear that uh, your ability to be fair and impartial in this case uh, may be affected by this affliction. The motion is denied, and your contempt, Mr. Owen, will take those proceedings up immediately after. <laughs> <laughs> Are there opening statements? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this, Your Honor, is a proceeding for appointment of a guardian for the estate of Sarah Winchester on the ground that she is not able to properly care for her property. And the law provides for the protection of persons who are likely to be deceived or imposed upon <coughs> by artful or designing persons. This law is designed to protect such persons from their own folly and to preserve their financial resources. Now, we will prove that Mrs. Winchester is suffering from a delusion that continual construction of her home will give her immortality, and that she is under the influence of artful and designing persons, including spiritualists and fortune tellers. Uh, she has already spent nearly $5 million in expanding and renovating a house with a market value of $5,000. And we will ask that the public guardian be appointed as conservator of, him, of her estate. I want to emphasize that we are not seeking to commit Mrs. Winchester, but only to manage her financial resources for her own benefit and the benefit of her heirs. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Your Honor, may it please the court, uh, we object most strenuously to the effort being made here to appoint a guardian of Mrs. Winchester's estate. We recognize that Mrs. Winchester's residence is the focus of much attention in this community. We, can, we concede that it is unique and a quite remarkable project. But the house is not a mystery to its own. It is a source of pride and accomplishment to Mrs. Winchester. She has built a home of great beauty. A 
Another source of pride uh, to my client is her plan for her estate. She has given it much careful attention. Her estate, having derived as it did from her deceased husband, William Wirt Winchester, of the family that, uh, as you remember, in, in the recent Civil War, uh, invented the, the repeating rifle. The AK-47. <laughs> that may have been the number. I think it had a 73. His memory is most precious to his widow. Mrs. Winchester will continue to meet her responsibility to safeguard her legacy. Artful and designing persons, ask yourself, after the evidence is all in, Your Honor, if it is not counsel and his so-called expert who are seeking to prey upon Mrs. Winchester. If it is not they themselves who are behaving in an artful and deceiving manner. We ask the court to heed the evidence and to throw them out. All your first witness. Uh, the petitioner will call Dr. George Wilkinson. You solemnly swear to tell the truth to the best of your ability, so help you God? I do. Just be seated. Give us your full name. George L. Wilkinson, W-I-L-K-I-N-S-O-N-M-D. Dr. Wil Wilkinson, uh, would you state your occupation, please? Yes. I am a physician specializing in medical psychology. All right. Uh, are you also known as an alienist? Yes, I am. Could you explain uh, to the court what an alienist is? Documented aliens or an undocumented? <laughs> <laughs> Fully documented, Your Honor. In former days, the study of insanity or lunacy was called alienism, those thoughts being alien to the possessors and to the society at large. At the present time, it is a term reserved solely for those that have been deemed expert in insanity and expert in Google matters. All right. Dr. Wilkinson, could you uh, describe the special training uh, you received in order to qualify as an alienist? Yes, I could. Would you please? Yes. I graduated from the Leland Stanford Junior University in 1896. Following that, I attended the Johns Hopkins Medical College for four years, graduating with my Doctor of Medicine in 1900. I next took two years of specialized training in medical psychology and neurology. Following that time, for three years, I was the Associate Superintendent at the Psychopathic Asylum of Baltimore. Since 1905, I have been the Assistant Superintendent at Agnew State Hospital for the Insane and the Chief Alienist. All right. Uh, doctor, do you belong to any uh, particular professional organizations that uh, specialize in the study of uh, mental disease? Yes, I do. What are those organizations? I belong first to the American Medical Association and more specifically to the American Medico Psychological Association. Now, Doctor, have you made a specialty of persons who are afflicted with mental disorders manifested by continual construction projects? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Is this a common syndrome, Doctor? Unfortunately, in my profession, it is found to be relatively common. In society at large, however, it is so are you aware of other examples of uh, houses that have been under continual construction uh, by their owner as a result of this syndrome? Yes, I have been called in to consult in similar cases. And uh, could you describe some of those other examples? <coughs> Most notable being the Halyon House, which is found in the Georgetown district of our country's capital. This house has been under continuous and irrational construction for the past
past 25 years. And is that the only house that has been under irrational construction in Washington for the last 25 years? <laughs> Is there a, a name for this uh, syndrome that you're describing? Yes, there is. And uh, what, what do you doctors call this syndrome? This syndrome is a form of monomania or partial insanity. It is most commonly known as the hammer syndrome. <laughs> notice that Mrs. Winchester's selection of counsel may itself be a manifestation <laughs> of her fixation. So far, everything's been out of state, Mr. Hammer, and your motion's denied. <laughs> Could you explain, Doctor, why it is called the Hammer Syndrome? Most well, certainly. This serious affliction drives the unfortunate subject to build constantly and build without rational purpose, to build to keep the thanatos or death force, which is at the heart of pathological mourning and depression, from overtaking their already enfeebled mind. <coughs> and, and why is it given the name Hammer Syndrome? Because it's usually characterized by not only constant building, but the necessity of constant noise, the ringing of hammers, and the buzz of saws. Now, Doctor, uh, in preparation for your testimony, have you examined Mrs. Winchester? No, I did not. Uh, why not? She refused examination. Uh, did you attempt to, uh, to meet her? Yes, I did, but was turned away. All right, and uh, apparently she's turned away others as well, is that correct? It is my understanding that the great president of these United States was himself turned away. All right. Well, is it your understanding that uh, Mrs. Winchester is a very reclusive person? Yes, it is. Have you uh, inquired into her family history? Yes, I have, through various sources. And uh, what have you learned about her family history? Learned that Mrs. Winchester, known as Sarah Pardee at that time, was born in 1840 to a stable and prosperous family of New Haven. There were five births within this family. Significant to note, Mrs. Sarah Pardee was the fifth child born, but the second Sarah within the family. Her elder daughter died in infant infancy. This, unfortunately, afflicted the next named child with double the expectations of their parents, but also double the love and attention. She seemed to prosper, and by the age of 20 was accomplished in four languages and a skilled keyboard musician. Did she marry, Doc? Yes, she did. Uh, and did you learn the circumstances uh, of her marriage? Yes, I did. Did you describe those? She was married to William Wirt Winchester when she was 22. The Winchesters were also a prominent New Haven family. Apparently the marriage went well as Sarah Pardee entered into the society of New Haven in a manner fitting her position. At age 26, some three years after the marriage, she had her first and only child. This child, unfortunately, died after seven weeks of a tragic, wasting disease, which we call erasmus. Her husband, though of frail health himself, threw himself into the family business in an attempt to deal with his grief. Sorry to say, Mrs. Winchester was unable to overcome her sorrow, and no more children were born to that union. And what became of her husband? Her husband died in 1881 after a long and lingering death that of pulmonary tuberculosis. Psychologically, this death was crushing Mrs. Winchester, also because it followed 
within a year, the death of her beloved father-in-law, who was the patriarch of the family. She was then left without child, without husband, and without a leader to the family. At this point, uh, did uh, Mrs. Winchester come to California? Yes, she did. Uh, by family rumor, uh, she may have first visited a spiritualist, which gave her the thought that if she came to California and began to build, that she herself would never die, and she would atone for the tragic deaths of her loved ones. All right. And upon coming to California, did she commence uh, the construction of a home? Immediately. And uh, did you visit her home? Yes, I did. All right, now, Doctor, uh, immediately behind you is what has been marked as Exhibit A for identification, uh, a large photograph. Do you recognize the photograph? Yes, I do. Uh, what does that photograph depict? This shows the large, rambling, and disorganized structure that Mrs. Winchester has called her home. All right. Did you visit her home? Yes, I did. Uh, and uh, were you guided through uh, the 160 rooms of that home? Not all of them, for none of the servants knew all of the rooms. <coughs> some servants could take me to some rooms, others uh, to different rooms. By my count, I was able to visit only 90 of the reported 160 rooms. Now, did any features of uh, this home cause you to question the rationality of its designer? A number of features struck me as being characteristic of an illness that we had so recently discovered. And that illness is? This illness is the monomania known as the Hammer Syndrome. It's expressed as the noted European professors uh, Jung and Freud have said and led us to understand in modern times that the home is a representation of the feminine mind and the eternal urges. Therefore, one can scientifically ex inspect the structure to reduce the mental state of the designer. <laughs> <laughs> now, could you uh, describe uh, the features that you observed in the house that uh, led you to question the rationality of its design? Yes, I can. May I consult my notes for a moment? Well, he's consulting his notes. Could you inform the group? How you obtained that view? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Uh, through an aerial balloon. <laughs> yes, even though uh, there have been no questions on it yet, could you let the court know what those colored uh, rectangles seem to be <laughs> on the right hand side? And, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Th those, are, those are carriages. <laughs> and this was a hand colored photograph? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Doctor, you can answer this question now. Thank you. Okay. The, room, the structure has a stated 160 rooms placed on 160 acres. It has thousands of doors, reportedly some 2,000 doors, many precipitously open on to drops of 20 feet. Numerous windows, many of which face inwards, never to see the sun, but apparently to be used to spy upon the servants of the home. And doctor, you did go to Stanford, didn't you? <laughs> Legal Stanford, the little school down there. Could you tell us that before we're going to Johns Hopkins? You graduated from Stanford. The farm, yes. Does the house that you're describing bear any resemblance to the Encino Hall? <laughs> Only on its external features. Please continue. Uh, 
Um, numerous features within the house are peculiar in the extreme. There are glass doors on the bathrooms, so that even at this most private of times, the mistress of the house could be ever vigilant of her staff. Posts and columns were inverted for no apparent reason. Stairways led to nowhere. Doors opened onto blank walls. Cryptic messages were written upon the glass. And in storerooms, I found bolt upon bolt of luxurious fabric, wall covering, glass, costly building materials, hoarded in gathering dust with no apparent use. Frequently, the panels were numbered in 13s, 13 sinks, 13 bathrooms, even 13 drain holes within the sink. Potentially significant. Well, let's, let's explore that, Doctor. Are you familiar uh, through your professional work with persons under the influence of spiritualists or fortune tellers? Unfortunately, I have been so acquainted. Uh, could you describe your experience uh, in that regard? Yes, it is my professional experience that the irrational practice called spiritualism is only undertaken by the artful and deceiving to prey upon the gullible or the deluded. And uh, uh, did you observe features in Mrs. Winchester's home that uh, led you to believe that she may be under the influence of a spiritualist or fortune teller? Yes, I did. Did the obsession with the number 13 manifest itself in this home? Repeatedly and irrationally. And what connection would that obsession have with being under the influence of a fortune teller or spiritual? Frequently the recurrence of the odd number 13, assumed by many to be unlucky, has a pronounced place in most spiritual rituals, and most of those that I have seen deluded with this affliction will have repetitions of 13 within their thoughts or their prayers. And do persons uh, under the influence of spiritualists uh, frequently believe they can communicate with spirits? Yes. And how is such communication conducted? Tragically, most of this communication occurs when the afflicted listens to their own deluded thoughts Sometimes they will use the assistance of a board on wheels called a Ouija board, where there their own disordered movements may spell them out messages. Now, based on your uh, inquiry into uh, Mrs. Winchester's family history, uh, based upon your discussions with those who are acquainted with Mrs. Winchester, and based upon your examination of her home, uh, do you have an opinion whether Sarah Winchester is able to properly care for her property? Yes, I do. And what is your opinion? I believe that Sarah Pardee Winchester, who by reason of the mental disability <coughs> has afflicted her, is substantially unable to manage her own financial resources and to resist the fraud or undue influence by others. And do you believe that uh, Mrs. Winchester is likely to be deceived or imposed upon by artful or designing persons? Yes, my understanding of this illness and my study of it in detail leads me to conclude that it only worsens with advancing age and the normal mental frailty of the later years. Thank you, Doctor. That concludes our direct examination. <coughs> Uh, Dr. Wilkinson, uh, does your Stanford education and your Johns Hopkins so-called medical training uh, permit you and advise the rendering of diagnoses without even seeing the patient? It is at times impossible to evaluate the patient, and we must use all scientific measures at our means to assist in our diagnosis. What scientific measures uh, would permit the rendering of a diagnosis without seeing the patient. This is a circumstance that I'm frequently called upon 
to examine the mental state of someone who has deceased. Conflicts about wills. So I've been trained to reconstruct the mental state of the individual without an examination of that individual themselves. Do I understand that before today you have never seen Mrs. Winchester? Despite repeated requests, I have been unable to. Did you personally interview any of the tradespeople who worked on the house? Only ones that had been there briefly. The most reliable, the most long term of the workers to a man refused to speak to me. Did you personally interview any of her household employees? They also refused entirely out of protection for the mistress. Did you personally interview any spiritualist who alleged to have worked with Mrs. Winchester? I would not deign to do such a thing. <laughs> In fact, Doctor, isn't the, the, the whole notion of Mrs. Winchester seeing a spiritualist a matter of your own conjecture? It is a minor point in the making of the diagnosis. The home speaks for itself and for the disordered mind of its owner. The home speaks for itself. That is correct. Have you, in your analysis and, and coming to your diagnosis, spoken to any single person who knows Sarah Winchester? She has no friends and is a recluse. The answer is no. Absolutely. You are then unaware of the actual purposes for which Mrs. Winchester constructed this house. That is not entirely true. Well, have you, you have not talked to her about why she built the house, is that correct? Upon her refusal. And you have talked to no one who knows her who would have been familiar with her purposes, is that correct? I have corresponded with family members, spoken to neighbors, and suppliers of building material. But again, doctor, you have no notion of why Mrs. Winchester undertook the project she did. Oh, quite the contrary. I have a quite definite You notion. have your theories, is that correct? I have a diagnosis and an etiology that is medically <coughs> oh, I see. Do you know, for instance, why she installed glass doors and screen doors in her bathroom? Do you know her own reason for that? No, I do not. Do you know the current state of Mrs. Winchester's physical health? Only that she's rumored to be frail and severely arthritic. And you cannot see the connection between uh, her physical health and some of the unusual features of the house? Yes, she is quite a brilliant woman, and there are a number of brilliant innovations within this home. During periods of lucidity, I imagine she could be quite charming and extremely capable. However, in the broader picture of her overall life, she unfortunately cannot maintain that lucidity. The house speaks for itself. No, Doctor, you use the phrase, and I, it's, it's from the statute, artful and deceiving persons. Did you encounter any actual instances of Mrs. Winchester being preyed upon in the past by artful and deceiving persons? I think one can safely infer that from the stockpile of unused building materials, gathering dust, costly windows that lead nowhere, very expensive materials with no rational purpose. Your answer then is the same, the house speaks for itself, is that correct? Each part of the house speaks a different message. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, you, you uh, stated as fact to your attorney that Mrs. Winchester had consulted alienists that uh, she had certain obsessions that uh, she constructed this house for reasons of, that were irrational. Isn't it a fact that your entire 
diagnosis is based upon neighborhood gossip and your own speculation. That is, of course, untrue. I have no further questions, Doctor. Thank you. Any further? Nothing further. Thank you, Doctor. You may step down. Call Sarah Winchester. Winchester, if you step over here, of course, this may take a bit of time, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. has been subjected to enough indignity by being hauled before this court today. Ladies of her status frequently wear veils, and I ask the court to reject this, uh, this outrageous effort to further embarrass Mrs. Winchester. And you further ask that we hold counsel in contempt for you. I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great oh, <laughs> Would you state your name, please? My name is Sarah Hardy Winchester. And your address, please? I live about four miles south of the city of San Jose. Uh, the Villa. And would you spell that for the record, please? Double L A N A D A. What is your age? My age at present, sir. Yes. And uh, you were previously married, is that correct? Yes, indeed, I was. And your marriage uh, ended with the death of your husband, is that correct? That is correct. And you lived at the time of the death of your husband where, please? New Haven, Connecticut. You had the one child of your, of your marriage who died in, in, shortly after her birth, is that correct? That is correct. And you have no other children? I have no other children. What what is your physical condition at the present time, Mrs. Winchester? Well, it's probably apparent to this entire court here that I am severely stricken with arthritis in the hands and knees, as well as troubled by neuritis. Do you have any close relatives at this time? Yes, I do, sir. Would you tell us the extent of your immediate family. I have one niece, Margaret Marriott, who lives here with me in Ada Villa, and I have sisters back east. I also have those remaining left of my husband's family in the east. When was it, when did, when did, your, uh, did your husband die, please? William died in 1881. And when, following the death of your husband, did you move to this community? Approximately in 1884. Would you describe, please, your acquisition of Yanada Villa? Well, you see, sir, I came out here in the East at the advice of my physician to seek a more pleasant climate. And uh, I immediately found this charming little eight room farm cottage, the Caldwell property which I decided to purchase for my sister. 
which I intended to coax out here. And I intended to live some miles north of here and build my own home. And uh, following your acquisition, did you undertake an expansion of the eight-room cottage? Well, we most certainly did. And what was, what was your reason for undertaking that expansion? Well, you, you see, it, it was a, a sort of a musty old thing, a farmhouse, and, and well, we decided we'd like to redecorate before we asked my sister to come out. And we became engrossed in that redecoration. I see. And uh, how long did the, uh, did the expansion project take? Well, it's still going on. I see. Uh, what, was the, uh, what was the extent of the expansion that you undertook for the purpose of housing your sister and other relatives? Well, of course, we initially had only eight rooms, and uh, they were rather tiny rooms at that. We decided to extend her uh, house to 25 rooms, and then we got this wonderful idea to build a grand house with separate wings, and I would then try to coax the remainder of my family to come out, and I would build a separate wing for each, and we would have this lovely, charming, beautiful Yanada Villa, where we could house all of us. Were there any other purposes to your continued expansion of the house? Yes, indeed there was. Would you describe those? Well, uh, my doctor uh, encouraged me to take on a hobby. <laughs> Did you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe it's H-O-B-B-Y. <laughs> anyway, he encouraged me to develop some interest of my own, to take my mind off of the death of my husband and child. And uh, I've always been interested in architecture, and I decided, since I had, Lord knows, plenty of time and plenty of money, I would indulge myself in my little dream of learning to be an architect. Did you employ persons in this, other persons in this project? I most certainly did. And has that employment of them also been part of your, the purpose of the continued expansion? I brought with me uh, a very dear friend, a carpenter from New Haven, and uh, he uh, recommended others. We, uh, we had actually, at, at present, we have 24 carpenters. I, uh, I like to keep uh, workmen who I'm familiar with. And uh, of course, as you know, times being what they are, uh, I keep my, my men uh, employed and well paid. And has that been part of your motivation for the continuing construction as well? Well, it, it most certainly has, sir. As we know, times can be rough. And and uh, I wouldn't dream of letting time to my men go after serving me so well. Do you treasure fine workmanship in, in the construction of, of your house? Oh, yes. That's why I've kept John on. He does only the best. And John is, is what? He's what my head carpenter. Your head carpenter. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you describe some of the workmanship that has gone on in the place? Well, John uh, and I have been working for many years on this beautiful parquet floor in the ballroom. And uh, we, uh, we also like to alternate the kinds of woods that we use, rose woods, mahoganies. Uh, I sort of indulge John in his whims as well and, and <coughs> work with materials that, that he would like to work with. Have you played any role yourself in the design of the house? Oh, most certainly. Would you describe your own role? Well, sir, I have a huge library full of books on architecture. And uh, although I'm somewhat of an amateur, I'm bound to make mistakes, <laughs> believe me, I have. I, I, I go out into my garden or into my room and, and sketch my ideas. And then, of course, I consult with John, consult my books, and we decide whether or not we can undertake what we want to do. <coughs> Have you come up yourself with any innovations in the process of this construction? Well, I'm glad you've asked me that. I most certainly have. Would you describe innovations or inventions that you have uh, 
originated? We have designed, or I have designed, a wash basin, porcelain wash basin, with the washboard contained right in the basin. Makes things very convenient. And I have uh, designed little dust plates at the foot of the steps in order to keep those nasty little dust pockets from forming. My servants are most thankful for that. And uh, you'll notice that on the windows of my house, I don't know if the doctor noticed this when he somehow entered my house without my knowing, that uh, the latches on the door are in the shape of a trigger modeled after the Winchester rifle. I also uh, invented the inside crank window. This is Winchester. Let me ask you about a, a different subject. Uh, do you have testamentary plans of your own? Uh, testamentary, sir. Uh, plans for what you would do with your property after your death? I most certainly do, sir. Would you, in general, describe those plans? I have provided for all of my employees very well. I've left the bulk of my estate to my beloved niece. My lawyer and I at the present are working on a gift of $1 million to build a hospital back in New Haven for the memory of my husband, William Ward. Okay. Do you, do you know whether the expenditures you are making on this house will in any way exhaust your estate? <laughs> Not at all, sir. You see, I, I inherited $20 million. I have an income of approximately $1,000 a day. And uh, my lawyer and I, Mr. Lee, have invested quite wisely. I don't think I'm in any danger of spending all of my money on my frivolous notion. Uh, do you know what you what you spent to date on the house? Uh, to date, sir, uh, approximately four million nine hundred fifty-three dollars, I think, and if I can consult my book, twelve cents. <laughs> Mrs. Winchester, do you agree with the effort of the public guardian to the appointment of a guardian of your estate? person who could take over the responsibility of making financial decisions for you. I most certainly do not agree with this. Are I you would, go ahead. I really don't understand why the gentleman wants to become so involved in my affairs. Obviously I know what I'm doing. Are you able to care for your own property and for your estate? I most certainly uh, Mrs. Winchester, uh, did yes, you sir. consult a Ouija board in preparation for your testimony today? <laughs> sir, I'm not sure I know what a Ouija board is. Uh, well, we have heard reports that occasionally you repair to a room in your home called the seance room, uh, where you communicate with spirits by means of a Ouija board. The so-called seance room uh, was named so obviously by persons other than myself. That happens to be a meditation room for myself, sir, that I believe you are referring to, and I own no Ouija board. All right. Do you know if your counsel consulted a Ouija board? <laughs> <laughs> the third count, Your Honor. I thought you were going to ask whether he thought the counsel was. <laughs> uh, do you believe that uh, you can communicate with spirits, Mrs. Winchester? Sir, I'm an Episcopalian. <laughs> <laughs> I repeat my question. I most certainly do not. <laughs> uh, is there any particular reason, uh, Mrs. Winchester, why there are no mirrors located in your house except in your own private room? First of all, sir, I would like to know how that sort of information was obtained. 
you are right in saying that there are no mirrors in my house, but there are also no mirrors in my room, and there's a very good reason for that, sir. I am an old and crippled woman. I do not like to be reminded of what I look like now compared to what I once looked like. Uh, could you tell us if there's any particular reason why you have five fireplaces in one room? <laughs> I'm afraid that was a dreadful mistake. <laughs> testimony then that the 47 fireplaces uh, located in the home uh, are not there for the ingress or egress for spirits? No, certainly not. <laughs> uh, did you ever make the statement, uh, Mrs. Winchester, that, quote, this house looks like a crazy person built it, unquote? I made that statement, sir. But it is dangerous to try to take statements out of context. If I recall correctly, I made that statement to one of my workmen after the 1906 earthquake. We were standing on the lawns out in front of the house after my beloved tower toppled through my favorite bedroom. There was debris everywhere. Obviously, it looked like a crazy person built it after the earthquake. Now, you indicate that uh, your plans for the house were for your sister and other relatives to move in with you? This is correct. Uh, how tall is your sister, Mrs. Winchester? Well, uh, I don't really recall. I imagine she's somewhere around five foot one. All right. Uh, do you have any relatives uh, who are less than four feet tall? <laughs> I most certainly do not, sir. Uh, could you explain then why uh, some of the doorways into and out of rooms uh, have only a four-foot clearance? You have to remember, sir, that we started with an original house, and we added on to that house. You also have to remember, sir, that a great deal of damage occurred during the earthquake. Sometimes we tore things down and built anew. Sometimes we just built over what we had. I'm sure that these strange features uh, are some, have something to do with the fact that we built over existing places. Now, Mrs. Winchester, in the ballroom of your house, uh, there are two stained glass windows, is that correct? That's correct. And on one of those windows uh, is inscribed the passage, Wide unclasp the table of their thoughts. And on the other window is inscribed, these same thoughts people this little world. Could you explain why you have those inscriptions put on these stained glass windows? Well, it's a bit of an invasion of privacy, sir. But I'll tell you, first of all, that both of those are quotes from Shakespeare. The first, why don't class the table of their thoughts, is taken from Troilus and Cressida, Act 4, Scene 5, I believe it's line 60. <laughs> Uh, why the unclass the table of their thoughts refers to the Elizabethan belief that thoughts were inscribed upon tablets in one's mind. Therefore, a wide unclassed tablet of one's thoughts would be that one's thoughts were open wide. Literally. The other quote is taken from Richard II, Act 5, Scene 5, Line 5. <laughs> These same thoughts people this little world. Richard is in prison in Act 5. He was once surrounded by many loving people and uh, finds himself alone. Therefore, he says he will create peoples of his private thoughts. So you see, sir, these quotes have very deep personal meaning to me. I have peopled my little world with my private thoughts. And I have built this house as a tribute to the people that I know. 
Uh, is it true, uh, Mrs. Winchester, that uh, you've been retained as an architectural consultant for the San Jose Convention Center? <laughs> is best summed up by the testimony of the eminent Dr. Wilkins, uh, who told us the house speaks for itself. <laughs> the best evidence of the need for a guardian in this case is the home that Mrs. Winchester has constructed itself, a monument to waste and profligacy. Five million dollars down a Victorian raffle. <laughs> This house will never serve any purpose other than to be an architectural curiosity. And by comparison, Your Honor, we might note that uh, the construction now underway uh, of Senator Phelan's house here, uh, Via Montalvo, uh, is at a, at a total cost of $62,000. Compare that to the $5 million that Mrs. Winchester is investing in this house. A guardian could preserve her estate in the hope that more rational minds could put it to better use. Well, the rational petitioner, you're going to go after the old senator, too. <laughs> I think the old senator's house, uh, Your Honor, will stand as a monument to much more uh, than the house that Mrs. Winchester has built. Uh, Lord knows there is plenty for carpenters and craftsmen to do besides uh, respond to whims plotted on a Ouija board. We could endow a, a hospital, or better yet, we could endow a law school. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, standard to be applied by Your Honor is whether Mrs. Winchester is likely to be deceived uh, or imposed upon by artful and designing persons. Uh, the fact that there is a recognizable syndrome, which the eminent doctor uh, has described for us, suggests that there are uh, still uh, other spiritual mediums out there who are advising lots of people that they must keep hammering in order to achieve mortality, her immortality. I think uh, it might be appropriate to launch an investigation to see if some of these spiritual mediums are getting kickbacks from builders and quarry. <laughs> 
work through hard work. Okay, you can launch this at public expense, is that right? Of course, Your Honor. <laughs> but you'd manage the investigation. Absolutely, Your Honor. If, uh, if I were an artful in designing law school dean, uh, I might employ spiritual mediums to advise people to keep litigating as a means to achieve immortality. Uh, we could probably call that the hammer syndrome, too. <laughs> speaks for itself. And what it says to us uh, is that there is great need for a public guardian uh, to assist uh, Mrs. Winchester in the management of her estate. Thank you. Your Honor, until today, I think this community had regarded Stanford and persons of Stanford education <laughs> as, a, as a badge of honor. Are you, I, asking, I am are you asking this court to take judicial notice of that? <laughs> <laughs> I am, Your Honor. Denied and you're in <laughs> In view of your ruling, I, I think you will probably accord with my, my conclusion that, uh, that Dr. Wilkinson dishonors education anywhere and has presented himself to the court, not as an expert, but as a fraud. To render a diagnosis, uh, as he has purported to do from this witness stand in this court, based upon the kind of, of evidence and uh, investigation that, that he undertook, uh, is without weight and should be of, of no bearing upon this decision. The kind of fuzzy thinking you don't, you don't want to see ever get into the law school. Ever. <laughs> and I would have thought, well, you did not. <laughs> the, the house speaks for itself is, is essentially what Dr. Wilkinson would have you base a psychiatric or a medical diagnosis upon. What does the Winchester House speak? Your Honor, San Jose is a quiet agricultural community. San Jose does not have a lot in this year, 1910, to attract visitors, to uh, boast of anything unusual other than its, its crops, its orchards. I think it's not out of, out of reason to expect that someday people may come from far and wide to observe the beauty of Mrs. Winchester's house. You may be a guardian, too. <laughs> Your Honor, to allow, to allow these meddling bureaucrats, these would-be deans of law schools. <laughs> Do we have an accounting of your fees? <laughs> Don't get it, Your Honor. They are expensive. <laughs> to prevail in a matter such as this would, would be a travesty and itself a fraud. Mrs. Winchester is a woman of honor. She is a woman of dedication. She is a woman of charity. She spoke of her objectives with her own estate. If you let these folks get hold of it, New Haven will lose a hospital. Mrs. Winchester's many anonymous charities will go wanting. And San Jose and this community will lose a great treasure. 
if you reject the plea of the public defender, the construction will continue. Public guardian, you are looking into the future. <laughs> we ask this court, Mrs. Winchester asked the court, I asked this court to reject this outrageous effort and to allow Mrs. Mrs. Winchester to go about her project. We thank you. Cause is submitted is the ruling of this court that the petition should be denied. The building of Mrs. Uh, by Mrs. Winchester is, in this court's view, irrational, but it really touches the very essence of, of what California is all about. <laughs>